Hello. So I'm gonna talk about the most common carnivore mistakes, in my opinion. Number one, not enough electrolytes. When you stop eating carbs and sugar, your insulin lowers, which means that you are not gonna be holding onto sodium primarily the same way. Sodium is the electrolyte that we need a lot of. We need specific amounts of other minerals and electrolytes, but sodium is at the top. I have a video specifically on electrolytes if you would like to learn more about them. I'm also going to be interviewing Angela Stanton who is, she runs the Migrainers Protocol. She has an awesome Facebook support group and she really, really dives into electrolytes and how they actually work in the body. So I'm looking forward to interviewing her and learning more from her. But please check out that video if you don't already know how electrolytes work in the body and how to prioritize them. The general recommendation is between two and five grams of sodium per day for someone on a low carb diet. I personally take 10 grams of sodium per day to feel optimal. Actually experimented lowering that and I blacked out. I passed out on my kitchen floor, I was butt naked, <laughs> came out of the sauna, nauseous, almost threw up and I passed out. I actually chipped my tooth. So never again will I judge myself for needing more sodium than what a lot of people need. I sweat every day in my sauna, I do CrossFit every day, and I know that I have always craved salt. I know that my adrenals want sodium and I just feel the best that way. So it's important for you to know where you lie with sodium. If you're currently taking like one gram per day, I would highly encourage you to experiment raising that slowly, maybe by half a gram per day. Most of my clients get up to around five grams of sodium per day and feel optimal there. There are some people who prefer less. Bella, Steak and Butter Gal, is one prime example, but she eats a lot of more raw meat and I would not consider her a sodium spiller. Dr. Ken Berry likes to use this term sodium spiller because there are some people who spill through sodium and there are some people who hold on to it. I am a sodium spiller. Dr. Ken identifies as a sodium spiller. Angela Stanton is, she actually is the one who taught me that we have genetic differences that literally dictate how we use sodium and other electrolytes. So again, please check out that interview. I'm gonna be interviewing her, her in three days here, so it, it'll be out within the next week or so when I publish this video, or it might already be out, who knows. So that's the first mistake. When someone is doing carnivore, you have to realize you need electrolytes. Our brains run on electromagnetic frequencies. We need sodium for insulin sensitivity. The sodium is feeds the cells of the colon. We need it. So I would experiment going slowly. If you don't wanna take an electrolyte supplement like Redmond Relight, my discount code is tailored, or Element, then you could certainly make a soul water, which is just extremely saturated water. You put salt into a mason jar, you add salt to the water in a mason jar until it stops dissolving. So essentially it's extremely saturated, it's like the ocean, and you take a small amount of that in regular water per day. So that's another great way to get your electrolytes if you don't wanna go and get an electrolyte supplement. I do not recommend supplementing with electrolytes in isolation, especially potassium. I have seen that go wrong countless times, and myself included. Next carnivore mistake that I see is not eating enough fat, especially in the beginning. If you're going into carnivore from a high carb diet, sometimes it can be beneficial to just switch to keto first. But overall, I would just say you need to realize that you are making a drastic switch. It's not just removing anti-nutrients, but you are learning how to use an entirely new fuel source for your body. You're switching from glucose to fat. That's a big deal. So becoming fat adapted can take anywhere from two weeks to six months, depending on the person and other factors. You want to be getting enough sleep. You want to reduce the stress in your life. Too much cortisol can prevent you from burning fat and becoming fat adapted in the first place. Not enough dietary fat can prevent you from becoming fat adapted. When you pull out carbs from your diet, but you don't bring in enough dietary fat, external fat, you are putting yourself in a purgatory of energy. 
your body hasn't learned how to use its own body fat yet so you have to keep that dietary fat coming in for it to get that signal to use fat for fuel so that's very important in the beginning especially once you become fat adapted you can play around with pulling back on the fat and allowing your body to burn through its own body fat if you have extra body fat to use we can burn around 30 calories worth of every extra pound of body fat on our body. So if you do the math, if you figure out your current body fat percentage, how much extra fat you have on your body, multiply that times 30, that's how many calories worth of energy that you can burn for free. Honestly, that's a huge tool that I think a lot of people are not tapping into because it feels uncomfortable to eat less and you don't necessarily have to eat less. When you're healthy and upregulating your hormones, should never have to drop below 1500 calories to get to a healthy weight. I think that even is extremely drastic. Again, focus on your hormones first, and I just did a series on weight loss. Focus on your hormones, focus on supporting your body, and you will upregulate your hormones, upregulate your metabolism, your resting metabolic rate, and then weight loss should come pretty easy. It also shouldn't be something that's happening quickly. I think that steady weight loss is key because if it's too quick, that probably means you're losing some muscle, which is really, really tragic. The third most common carnivore mistake that I see is eating the wrong types of fat. So I personally do not consume pork or chicken. It'll be once in a blue moon, and I've never seen a blue moon. So the reason being that pork and chicken are comprised of polyunsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated fat, or PUFAs, are omega-6 inflammatory oils. Do I think you need to cut them out 100%? No, usually not. And there are people who thrive on eating bacon every day. I think bringing the insulin down and cutting out the crap is huge enough. But for someone who's hitting a weight loss stall or someone who is not feeling energized, I would highly recommend that you start utilizing saturated fat coming from ruminant animals like beef, bison, lamb, goat, veal, that type of fat is easily used by the body. Polyunsaturated fat is actually recycled into our lymphatic system and then deposited into our fat cells for storage. That is the nature of polyunsaturated fat. Saturated fat is easily oxidized. It's a great fuel source. On top of that, saturated fat comes usually from animals, comes with steric acid, which promotes mitochondrial fusion which essentially means that two damaged mitochondria will fuse together to create a new healthy cell. It is literally upregulating your mitochondria. It's literally making you able to make more energy. That's what steric acid does in the body. And that steric acid is found in lamb, very rich in lamb. Lamb fat is also more rich in omega-3 than wild caught salmon. And it's very rich in a lot of beef fat, grass-fed animals, so ruminant animals really is key. Focus on the right types of fat, not just any fat. I would say the fourth most common mistake that I see people doing is being too strict right out the gate. That was my mistake. I did just beef, salt, and water eight times. Every time I felt worse. It was too heavy on the beef. It was too high in histamine, which is probably the fifth most common mistake, is too much histamine. And I just felt worse. And what I needed to do was broaden my mindset, stop putting myself in a box, stop putting a label on myself, and just realize, okay, I gotta remove the anti-nutrients and I've gotta eat animal foods because that's where the nutrients are, the bioavailable nutrients. And I did what I could. I did what I could financially afford. At that time I was eating fish skins, which I was getting free from the local seafood merchant. I was eating pig ears, not optimal in my opinion, but it worked. Find what works for you. I needed variety. I mean, when I first started this, I was eating, every morning I would have one small burger, one lamb rib. I would have eaten more lamb ribs, but I couldn't afford to eat more than one per day. I was eating broth, I was eating pig ears, fried pig ears, air fried pig ears, air fried fish skins, and that was breakfast. And then I would have more meat at night. When I switched to Billy Doe Meats, I felt like I could do anything. Like the variety that you get from Billy Doe Meats, you can have lamb bacon, boneless lamb sirloin, lamb chops, goat shank, all these different cuts are so decadent and delicious and satisfying. They're high fat. 
the right type of fat, and it gives you variety. It's so much easier for me to stick to something when I have variety. About a year into my journey, I discovered Equip Foods Prime Protein. That's when I created the carnivore brownie recipe. That makes this way more sustainable for me. The same goes for Tyler. He wanted to go keto and he crashed. He crashed and burned. <laughs> he didn't do well. But then he decided to do it again after he came to my first retreat. He's like, I actually want to do carnivore. He learned about oxalates from Sally Norton at my retreat and what got him through the cravings, the intense sugar cravings, and he was addicted was my carnivore brownies. I was making him a huge batch every single week. I'm talking 32 eggs. I would put the Lily's chocolate chips on them and it really helped him. So he really didn't want to eat any sweet things. He didn't want to do that, but it actually ended up really helping him. It helped to bridge him to where he is now, where he doesn't need to eat any of those things. He eats meat every day with me and it's awesome. So I would say, figure out what works for you. Are you an abstainer or are you a moderator? And how are you gonna give yourself variety and give yourself healthy boundaries? Because boundaries and discipline actually creates freedom. But when you start out something restrictive and you're white knuckling, you are less likely to succeed. I wanted to say you will not succeed, but you're less likely to succeed. You can white knuckle things, but I don't think that's God's plan. I don't think that we should have to. There are ways to make it easier on yourself without drawing outside your boundaries, healthy boundaries. If you need help with that or establishing what those boundaries should be for your goals, consider working with a coach. Last thing I would say is too much histamine. Histamine is actually an amino acid. It is beneficial. We need histamine, but histamine intolerance occurs when there is a buildup of histamine, usually in the digestive tract or our tissue. And so histamine is higher in foods that have been aged and so you can expect it to build up in things that are protein. So obviously meat comes with a lot of histamine. So something I love about Billy Doe is that they do not age whatsoever. North Star Bison, my discount code is tailored. They have a whole tab of low histamine, non-aged meat as well. And that is a game changer for a lot of people. Signs of histamine intolerance could be diarrhea, anxiety when you're eating, heart palpitations shortly after you've been eating, a runny nose, that's histamine intolerance. And you can heal from this. I had it in the beginning when I had my broth and I just got through it and it looks different for everyone. But I've worked with people with mast cell activation syndrome to get through that. It takes time, but it is 100 million percent curable. So don't be afraid and don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You just wanna focus on less aged meat and consider eating more variety like lamb or goat or veal because those are smaller animals and they're going to be naturally less histamine because it takes much less time to process a small little lamb versus a 1500 pound cow. All of these things, the processing or ground meat or how long it's just been sitting on a shelf, that all of that plays into histamine and how much there is. So those are the first things that come to mind. If you would like to comment and give your input on anything that you wish you had known when you started carnivore, I would love to hear about it. Um, and I might make a part two to this, I'm not sure, but this is where I'm gonna start.